Here is an example of uh, face modulation helping us to induce uh, stationary behavior in a stochastic process. Here is another example. So you have uh, at the input we have a non-stationary stochastic process uh, which is in fact let's say zero mean Gaussian with autocorrelation function T1, T2, the product of T1, T2. And this is certainly an autocorrelation function because you can see in fact if you build the matrix uh, out of the auto, out of this Rij's it's going to be a rank one matrix. Uh, so it's an autocorrelation function. This is being for phase modulated. So let's say the output is of this form. Cosine omega naught t. This is a carrier uh, pl uh, plus the phase modulation of this uh, input non-stationary process. And by the time it comes to you, it's reasonable to assume that the phase also has a random uh, component in it, some random variable which is uncorrelated with this or independent, we'll assume it to be independent to make progress. So theta is a uniform random variable uh, from 0 to 2 pi. So let's look at the expected, I want to find out the expected value and the autocorrelation of x of t. So expected value of x of t is your know, expected value of this, but this you can expand it as, this you consider as a plus b. So cosine a multiplied by cosine b minus sine a sine b expansion. But because I'm assuming these to be independent, expected value hits both of them separately. But expected value of cosine theta and sine theta when theta is uniform is zero. So this bottom line is this whole expected value is x of t has a, a zero mean. If you look at its autocorrelation, of course we do, we do not know whether it is stationary or not. So we will start with the Rxx which is expected value of xt1 multiplied by xt2. Uh, so we will try to compute this quantity. Uh, so this quantity is what we are calling Rxx t1 t2. So let's see you substitute this is x1 multiply x of t1 multiplied by x of t2. But this is of the form cosine a, this, if we can call this to be cos a, this is cos b. Cos a cos b is cos a plus b plus cos a minus b. So I'm going to use that one now, uh, divided by 2. So a plus b is, notice that omega naught t1 plus t2. Then you have wt1 plus wt2 plus the 2 theta from there plus cosine a minus b is omega naught t1 minus t2 w t1 minus w t2 and note that because the thetas cancel. Now here if you take the first term once again you can expand by assuming this to be some quantity c. So cos c cos 2 theta minus sine c sine 2 theta but c and thetas are independent because w and theta are independent. So once again expected value of cos 2 theta and sine theta 2 theta goes to 0. Bottom line is we are faced with this expression. So let me call this quantity to be t1 minus t2 to be tau. And let me note, no, notice the, no, the notation voice wt1 minus wt to be some random variable z. So this autocorrelation function of x of t is of this form expected value of cos omega naught tau uh, plus c. So if I expand this, this reads now uh, cosine of omega naught tau which is a constant expected value of cos z uh, minus uh, half uh, sine omega naught tau expected value of uh, sine z. Uh, so we need to find out the expected value of these two quantities. So first of all, let's uh, take a look at uh, z. z is wt1 minus wt2. So that's a Gaussian random variable uh, because they, these are jointly Gaussian. So each of them have zero mean, so its mean is uh, zero, and uh, its so mean is zero, and its variance is you uh, square it. So you have expected value of uh, w squared t1 plus expected value of w squared t2 minus 2 expected value of wt1 wt2. But this is the autocorrelation function at t1 t2. 
This is simply the autocorrelation function at T1, T1. This is the autocorrelation function of the input processor T2, T2. Uh, but this is given to be t this is t1 squared this is t2 squared from the because r w w t1 comma t2 is t1 t2 so this is given to be t1 t2 so minus 2 t1 t2 so this is t1 minus t2 the whole squared but t1 minus t2 we decided to call tau squared so this variance is tau squared now, to compute this cosine expression, let's look at the characteristic function of uh, z. So that's expected value of e raised to j omega z. But this is e raised to expected value of minus omega squared z squared by 2, standard expression. But this you can expand as cosine plus sine. So this is actually expected value of cos. And let me put, uh, let me compute this for omega equal to 1. So this is, if you put omega equal to 1, you get this, uh, plus uh, j, expected value of sine z, and put omega equal to 1 on the right side, you get x z squared by 2. So we get, this is a standard expression, expected value of cos z, when z is a Gaussian random variable, is e raised to minus z squared by 2 and expected value of sine z which are all the odd order moments are anyway zero but we can see it from here also there is no imaginary part on the right side so we can plug this expression here so this goes to zero and uh, we get from here we get r x x so so notice that this is simply so the right side is now a half cos omega naught tau e raised to minus uh, sigma z squared is we computed here as tau squared so this is simply tau squared by 2 also notice that the right side is only a function of tau and hence the left side uh, is also a function of tau so we conclude that x of t is in fact a wide sense stationary so the phase modulation has induced a stationarity at the output so from here, if you want, we can find the power spectrum of uh, uh, the output process. So that's, this is going to modulate the spectrum of this. But the spectrum of e raised to minus tau squared is once again Gaussian shape. So this is of the form e raised to minus omega minus omega not the whole square. Uh, plus e raised to minus 2 omega plus omega not the whole square. Um, uh, there's a half here. So if you plot the spectrum, it will look like this. It has one Gaussian shape, and it's, uh, so this is the way power spectrum works. Shifted Gaussian spectrum in the frequency domain, uh, peaking at uh, omega naught and minus omega naught. So the moral of the story is uh, uh, through a nonlinear memoryless uh, process we have been able to induce uh, stationarity in other words uh, some structure stationarity of course is some structure uh, so there is more structure at the output compared to the input this doesn't happen always you cannot take an arbitrary process and phase modulate and, and uh, expect it to be wide substationary if it is non-stationary here most of the time this will be non-stationary but there are uh, peculiar situations and those are always interesting and uh, this is uh, one such example.